Hey, we have the pleasure <laughs> yeah, of we having do. Steve Holland mm-hmm. in the house today. We're super excited about this. I was lo- really looking forward to this because his life, his family dynamic, his marriage um, is intriguing at the least. Yeah, uh, There's just a lot to it. And so um, we're going to get into that. Um, but I want to start off with um, something that um, we just experienced this morning is that you were out at Fisherman's Retreat mm-hmm. out uh, off of San Timoteo Canyon Road. Um, and let's hear about how the fishing was. Um, <laughs> non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> and very unfortunate because um, my youngest son, Ace, he loves fishing, but it's just not something that we make time for. But lately, I've been trying to be more intentional with my time and him and and it just was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good times. We had uh, probably 20 um, men um, and some girls uh, yep. there with uh, with dads um, and sons yeah. with dads fishing out at Fisherman's Retreat. It's part of Sandals Church Banning Men's Group, Men's That's Advance. Cool. And so it was really, really cool time just hanging out out there and, and uh, time to chat. And it was beautiful weather. And so I think fishing, though, in general, is just... I think one of the things that we sleep on, um, because it's such a, like a, it tests your patience, oh, especially yeah. if you don't catch anything. Yeah. You're like, did I just waste my time? <laughs> it's very rewarding when you're actually pulling things in, but then uh, I'm just not that patient to go through a whole day and not even get a nibble or anything like <laughs> well, that. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> and then for me, like, that's something I want to, I'm trying to reincorporate into my life right now is just like, how many things can I do to make me feel like to be more patient yeah and that's one of those things that will test it for golf sure golf and fishing those will test Ooh. your patience well golf i'm absolutely horrid at so <laughs> well okay so into steve's story a bit mm. so he is married to joelle and joelle is a longtime employee of sandals church she um, works at the network level she was a part of um, network kids um, and she did all of like the filming all of the the um, curriculum that they utilize in the kids' ministry, all the film that they, they utilize, um, all that video. Um, she was a part of that core team. Did some um, hosting. Yep, did, did some, some hosting. You did absolutely. some story times. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, she's so great at it. Yeah, she's, mm-hmm. so she's amazing. She's also a CrossFit trainer, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so she, that's a big part of her life. They are um, a family of boys. So you have how many kids? Two boys. Two boys, and um, also another intriguing part about their story is that Steve is a Marine. Um, he's a master sergeant. Correct. Um, and he also specializes, he trains um, in special ops in terms of um, like uh, sharp shooting, um, and long distance, long range um, sharp shooting. And um, so sniper strategies and yep. techniques. Um, and trains like literally all over the United States. Um, and we've seen video of stuff that you've done, like these mobile targets that you guys yeah. shoot at, you know, Incredible. oh yeah, it's, it's amazing. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I've been very fortunate with my Marine Corps career to kind of, um, know the right people. So, uh, when it came time for me to get new orders or something in that perspective, um, People have come to me like, hey, I know your skill set and I have something here that you would just be perfect for. And so the Marine Corps just recently created a new sniper program and it's uh, for the reconnaissance community. It's called the Recon Sniper Course. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's a very specialized course for uh, reconnaissance Marines only. And when they started this, they needed instructors. And so... My uh, my former commanding officer and my uh, one of my units, he's he was picking these instructors, and he's like, I I know this guy mm. that would just be perfect to come in and supplement as an instructor when he can, and thankfully that was me. And so he called me, and he's like, Hey, I have this opportunity. Let's find a way to make this happen. Yeah. And we were able to do it. Everything aligned, and now so. I am a sniper instructor for the reconnaissance sniper course, it's and per- I, I couldn't be happier. It's, it's amazing to watch, too, the videos that you put out. I yeah. mean, we're talking up to a mile 
distance. Yes. Right. Shooting from a mile away. Yep. Insane. And hitting, hitting a moving target. Yeah. Like it's just, it is crazy to watch yeah, I and tell, see the technology. I tell them all the time, I'm like, I live vicariously through you because there's those yeah. things that I'll never do. Yeah. And so it's cool that you share that with people so that we can like, guys like us can see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and s- you're set in a strategic position in training some of the best of the best um, who will go out and risk their lives and protect lives. Mm. Um, so it's really cool to, to see, I mean, somebody that has this kind of gifting and skill um, and training at an elite level yeah. that can train others yeah. um, to, a, to an elite level. Um, in addition to all that, you have been on tours before you told me three combat deployments yes yep, de- mm. you've been deployed three times yep and can you tell us like where you were deployed and what that was like uh first first deployment was uh we we're in and out of fallujah uh in iraq um anbar province um sprinkled combat stuff like that uh second time we were man it's kind of the same area, but just the more southern. So uh, combat was drying up, stuff like that. But still, uh, still got to be on your game. You yeah, know? absolutely. Uh, the third time, I was attached to uh, a MU, which is a Marine Expeditionary Unit. Just we have uh, the Marine Corps has big, huge boats uh, strategically placed all over the world. So if anything ever happens. The closest boat goes, whether mm. and that's not just combat; it's humanitarian aid and yeah. and just interdiction and anything that they need to do. It's they're readily available. So I was uh, a part of that. Wow! Yeah, I just got through listening um, to a book called "Extreme Ownership" by Jocko Willink, and we're trying to f- remember the the second author because he co-authored with somebody that was also um, who worked with him, and. Um, just fascinating because they, you know, all the Ambar province and Fallujah and, and um, just how much happened oh, yeah. there and still, I mean, it's still and multiple hotbed. times, you yeah. know, we went in there and then pulled out and it got right back worse and mm. we had to go back in and, and multiple times, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. so. What do you think, like, as far as, I mean, because I know we don't want to be there all the time, right? It's yeah. like, but at the same time, what do you think is like, too early to pull out like is it it's literally situation by situation but like what are signs like that you're like ah this just not shouldn't we i don't know like you know what's what's very hard um there is a quote that says you can only lead a horse to water you know and you can't make him drink and i think yeah just it's a different i've been very fortunate to go to other countries and you experience just different kinds of people and unfortunately that the Iraqi country and the people that we were trying to help they just had a different um, mindset a different demeanor than mm. like us you know like yeah. we want to go in we want to help this is our duty and stuff like that and they are very um, you have very courageous and strong willed men there mm-hmm. but they're few and far between the, okay. the general um demeanor of the country is like hey like this is the way it's supposed to be yeah you yeah. know they they're islamic and they they say like hey this is this is the will of god this is this mm-hmm. is how he uh wills it so they they don't have that backbone that gusto that you know yeah. we're we're looking for to hey you should fight for your country well i yeah. mean why you know they're they're just farmers and stuff like that so it's just different yeah uh, and it's frustrating on our end because we don't get it you know we're like well you should just just do this because that's the way it needs to be and yeah, they're just like nah, point. you know like nah we're good and they're quick to throw down their guns and run the opposite way because it's not worth it to them you know so yeah. it's very frustrating yeah i can imagine especially if you're doing a lot of training with them and trying to prepare them and equip them yeah. uh, to be able to take things on, on, on their own. Yeah. Um, Cause at some point in time, like the support won't be there. Yep. So another thing about you that a lot of people might not know is that you're a firefighter. Yep. Right. A military firefighter. The skills don't stop. Yeah, I know. The skills don't stop. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. Um, 
you know, I was back in like 2015, 2016, I had just gotten back from deployment and we immediately went back in the workup to do another deployment. And it was like, you're going to be gone again. And then after that, you're going to be gone again. And it's like, man, and the time away, the, the war was over at this point. So I was, I had this internal feeling like, hey, I'm like, I'm sacrificing all this time with my family. My boys are at prime age to hang out. Me and Joel started just drifting more and more apart to the point where like our marriage was on, you know, sandy foundation. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was very close coming to an end. And I, and we both had to like make a decision. Like you can keep deploying, but you know, the outcome or mm-hmm. you can leave the military and we can try and salvage what we have and do something different. So I, we kind of went into scramble mode, like, well, I'll just be a cop. But then it's like, they have the kind of same job and uh, mm. arrogance that I had back then. Like, I'm going to dedicate all my time to my work again. And, you know, do you want to go Border Patrol? It's like, same thing. I'm going to just dive into that. And um, luckily, I had a brother-in-law who was a firefighter. and He was a captain. And he's like, hey, you know, like, this is a really good job. The yeah. pay, you get paid well. You have a weird schedule, but you only work 13 days a month, which is the total opposite of what you're doing now, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know your schedule year out, and and I we pretty much were like, I've never thought about being a firefighter, but, I mean, this is what I need to do to make everything work. So yeah, I did what I had to do. I, I got my EMT. I got my um, fire academy done, and luckily I got just hired immediately is when I left active duty in 2017. Um, and I've been loving it ever since I was, I was scared that there wouldn't be any crossover training. I wouldn't have skills that were relevant yeah. to that, but, um, I've just been excelling at being a firefighter and I'm glad for that. Now I, I really enjoy it. Now you guys not only provide fire service for the base, but oftentimes a lot of your calls are for accidents on the freeway. You kind of post Correct. every once in a while, like, you know, truck flipped over or yeah. a car, you know, you're, you're trying to pry open, you know, a yeah. car to get somebody out. And um, so tell us like how that, like the day in and day out service of being a firefighter on a base yeah. looks like. Um, again, just stars align. And I'm very fortunate to be a part of a very unique fire department. So, it's awesome. Federal firefighting, more particular DOD firefighting, um, their job is to protect the, protect the base and everyone and everything on the base. Um, in At the Marine Corps base in Barstow, it's huge warehouses. And then the base is split, and then it's maintenance centers. And so nothing really has happened in these big storage facilities because there's there's tons of stuff in there so the marine corps spent a lot of money on fire suppression per, stuff. suppression yeah. so like nothing really happens on the base but from barstow to las vegas there's no other fire department except yeah. us wow. and and this freeway splits you have the 15 and the 40 and really from the 40 there's nothing from our base to 29 Palms. You know, there's like no other. Yeah. So they have what's called a mutual aid agreement for like, hey, if anyone flies off the road or whatever, then would you guys be willing to respond? And and we uh, we agreed to that. So yeah. we, we get a lot of traffic collisions and semis on fire and stuff like that on the freeway. But then there's underlying towns in between all that, that we provide medical aid and stuff like that to them. And plus, they're all pretty small. Yep. You know, Newberry Springs, Daggett, there's just, they're just blips on the map, yep. but those people still require medical services and stuff like that. You know, I was going to say too, I know that you are, you kind of say like, well, I just, the stars align things are, but you gotta, you, there's something about a person that if they're going to like, if, 
things kind of work out. Of course, God opened all those doors mm-hmm. for you. Um, but like, you got to be a pretty charming person a, a, and somebody that people want to be around and trust. And you're good at relationship building with people and um, becoming brothers with other men yeah. and things like that. All of that, I would say also the person that you are also got you to where you are today too. Because when people are thinking, who would I invite into this? When they, when they, when you pop into their head, that's something that they're thinking about. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, Steve's trustworthy. Steve would work hard. Steve cares about people. He's an honoring person, all those things. And you're super talented. So you got to think like that's what people are thinking about when yeah. they're asking you to move in. So you didn't just get here by by chance, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I just want to just affirm that in you. Like you got to be able yeah. to, to own that too because you're a good guy and you've worked your butt off. I'm just out here being me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard sometimes to look in the mirror and be like, who are you and – uh to realize that you are all these things. So I, yeah. I never, yeah, I never give myself probably the credit, but. And yeah, I mean, you're ministering to the group of guys that you work mm. with, um, who even work under you at, at that, um, at your station on mm. the base, um, sharing your faith. And we've kind of talked about that before. Yeah. Um, so when I, and I'm, I'm trying to be very intentional in that with my life lately because um, when I went in the Marine Corps, like all religion out the door, it's a different atmosphere, you know, like every, if they are religious, nobody talks about it, you know, and, and really everything is so anti-religious, anti-Christian, like to, if you just want to fit in, you know, you're going to get eaten alive if you're like, Hey guys, <laughs> uh, no, I can't go out tonight. Cause I got church some in the morning. They'll eat you up and just the way you talk, the swearing, the, you know, uh, masculinity and the conversations that yeah. you have in that is like so I, and I, I fell right into it. I was just looking for somewhere to belong and I mm-hmm. fell right into it. So, um, cause especially the Marines, uh, like above we're known for any, it. Yeah, we're known for it. Any of the armed forces, like when you think a Marine, you're yeah. talking about tough as nails, you know, strong, uh, focused, um, and so think about the community that I was in, the, the recon community, the, you know, the special forces community is like the alpha males of, of <laughs> all that, yeah. you know, so you just have really unique characters in that. And, and I just fell right in, you know, so, um, and I got bad, I got really bad. I got sucked into that. And then when my oldest son was born, huge, I was in Kuwait. I had just got there. We were going to Iraq like the next day and my son was born, uh, huge medical problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife is in the hospital, not able to see him, stuff like that. And, and she, prior to this huge anti-Christian, like, um, question, like, why would someone believe in this? You know, like it was kind of, uh, just something that she was not, uh, not with something just drew her right into that little church in the hospital, you know, that you've, you see, Mm. you know, and she just, she broke down and she just cried like out to God. And, um, so when I came back from deployment, I was doing real soul searching on, on this deployment too. And I was like, you know, like I feel the tug coming back. And, you know, when I came back, she's like, Hey, like, think we should start going to church Mm. and I was like let's do it and luckily um my good friend at the time uh he's like hey you know like I go to church and we have this small little church in in Carlsbad and we'd love to have you and huge explosion in my Christian faith with Joel just um with a fire just burning in her, you know, she got hired at that church yeah. and wow. we were just regularly attending and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it changed my total view. And then, um, but I still, I left that atmosphere, you know, in 2017 leaving active duty. And I was like, this is my chance to realign my morals. Mm. Everyone I hang out with, you know, it's stuff like that. We started going to sandals. And at the time, Pastor Matt was preaching about like you are who you hang out with and stuff yeah. like that. And, and me and me and Pastor Matt were like, I swear, every time he talks, 
he's like talking to me. <laughs> Our lives are so similar. The things that yeah, he goes through. He's a military through, guy too. Yeah, yeah, and so everything he talks about, I feel like I'm just sitting there like, oh my gosh, like yeah. he's staring right at me through <laughs> the, the teleprompter, you know. And I'm and like, he's a Man. straight talker too. Yeah. So you can and like he's military straight guys. talking to me, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. so similar. And so I was like, yeah, like this is my chance. So in the Marine Corps, I, I focused on just making everyone my friend. Like, and now I'm like, I need to build a powerhouse of friends. And so I don't want to hang out with everyone. I don't want to right. hang out with you. If you are a man of God, I am trying to put you in my life, you know, yeah. like, uh, because I want to be that person. And so now, um, again, Pastor Matt was talking, he was preaching a sermon on what do people at work think of you? And are you that guy? Like, you know, like, I'm starting to feel that tug from God. Who can I talk to about this? Yeah. Well, I know Steve goes to church every... So now I, at the firehouse, I'm yeah. trying to be very intentional with conversations I have so people know Christianity is, is, should not be forced on anyone because that's not the way that they're going to come to God. Yeah. But when they start feeling that, I want to be known like, hey, you can mean you can hang out. And we can talk about this and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so um, I've well, had really good conversations with people at work uh, now because I'm, I'm trying to be that guy. Well, they trust you. Mm -hmm. That's another part of it, right? They yeah. all love you and trust you already. So when they go to you, it's a, it, they know like, oh, Steve's not going to just shove this down my throat and we're, he's going to like make me feel bad about this. Yeah. You're, you know, they, that's they, the quickest way to be planted on a gravel road, you know, yeah. that seed is planted mm -hmm. and then quickly dried up yeah. because somebody crushed it, you know, like, yeah. Oh, you're a Christian. Yeah. Oh, okay. I won't, I won't explore that anymore. Right, right. <laughs> you know? It's true. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. Like the, the plan of the gospel, the way that God created it is that it could have happened in a variety of different ways, multitude of ways, but he decided determined it was going to happen through relationships. Yeah, yeah. One relationship at a time. So, you know, it, what Jesus did with the 12 disciples um, is the ministry was going to flow through those relationships. Plan A, to get the gospel to us, we're, we are the benefactors, we're the fruit of something that happened thousands of years ago through relationship. Yep. That was plan A. There was no plan B. Like, yeah. if that didn't work... <laughs> that we're, we'd all be up a creek, but it did work because he knew it would work. And it's through relationship. Yes. It's, yeah. through, it's through that, you know, connecting with people yeah. on a heart level, um, not just in the mind. It's not just like intellectual ascent. It's not just, Oh, okay. Now I understand it. It's, it's, a, it's at the soul heart level. So God well, is definitely using you on that. Yeah. I, and that's like something that's so important to us, like here at this campus, especially like not that in, any of our other campuses don't do this, but just, we talk about this regularly. It's just relationships, relationships, relationships. Like go and meet somebody, actually care enough to listen, enough to care about their story. Like the things that we're doing right now, it's just talking to people, getting to know them. Like we feel closer to you just by having conversations, you yeah. know? And, and it's the same reason why we're doing what we're doing is yeah. because we know you, um, but it, we want the body of, of Sandals Church Banning and even beyond that to get to know you and yeah. see like, you know, Okay, so now there's a connection there that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So Yeah, you know, we made, I made that joke earlier when John asked me, what were you doing out there at the fishing retreat? And I was like, oh, he's fishing for men. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, very much so, that yes. is what brought me and my family here. Randomly got a call from you one day. Mm -hmm. You know, we were previously attending East Valley, and you're like, hey, what are you doing today? Nothing. Let's meet for coffee. Yeah. And we just hung out. Mm -hmm. We just talked about stuff, nothing important. And you just, you made a comment. And you're just, I want to know you, like, tell me about you. Yeah. And that's, and I was, I knew that I was feeling like no one has had this interest in just me before at a campus, you know, no one yeah. has went out of their way to just hang out, stuff like that. And me and you have done it a few times. You yeah. call me, text me. Hey, what are you doing this week? Is there any time we can just hang out and get lunch or whatever? Yeah. And 
that feeling of community is what brought us here, mm. you know, and it hasn't gone away and you guys are just continuously doing it. And I think that you're very much so in it regularly comes up around here. Like, Hey, we need to reach out to this person. They haven't come out in a while, yeah. you know, or, and stuff like that. So, um, I think that's what separates this campus from a lot is that we are small enough to keep doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But because we're, because we're small and have done that, we're now growing to the a big, you know, we're yeah. regularly having huge services in here. Yeah. I think the key is like John and I talk about this a lot. Um, trying to keep a growing campus small in the way that we scale that, because it, it really comes down to this. It's um, yeah. the relationship. It's, it's Robert Lopez, who's, you know, behind the cameras right now, um, who we made a connection with way back in the day. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing. It's like the fruit of, of those kind of connections and relationships. So. Yeah. And that stuff is so special to us. Yeah. Like it, it's the kind of thing that outside of these conversations, we're talking about like, we're blessed to like to know these people, to yeah. know you, to know Robert Lopez, to know Joel and Hunter and Ace. Like we're 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 blessed to be able to have these relationships with everybody. Um, and it's just something so special, especially with you. We've been talking about getting you on here for a while, yeah. and it's the worst. I mean, ser- seriously, a sharpshooter recon um, that trains guys are elite around the world, and a firefighter, wife, CrossFit. Two boys. Hunter um, helps with our production. Yeah. S- um, Steve is on our safety team. I mean, and, and Joel works for Sandals. I mean, it's r- really, there's a lot of fascinating aspects. We haven't even gotten into all of it. Yeah. But, hey, we were just thankful to be able to snag you on a Saturday. You're busy, um, but we're thankful for your time. And we're just, we love you. We love you like a brother and a, f- a close friend. And yeah. so we're going we're gonna to have to have him back on yeah, here, we'll like, to, ASAP, because... Yep. We got so much more <laughs> like I like <clears throat> like we grew up together. I know so much about Steve. He knows so much about me, too. It's yeah. so funny. Um, and, you know, just all of the, the family dynamic, like what was it like for everybody like growing up, like being like having a military father and husband and like there's so much. And and he's so good at mountain biking. Yeah, no, he <laughs> does the and he films it and it's amazing to watch him do that stuff. Um so we need a part 2. Y- yes, and he's so, an incredible skateboarder too. Wow. So it, it's, yeah, I didn't even know. He's just good at everything part. he does. It's ridiculous. Just, he's just gifted. <laughs> it makes me sick sometimes. Me too, man. I'll just go home and cry <laughs> on my pillow. So hey, we just wanted to pray for you, pray for your family, um just as a wrap up to this. So. Yes, please. Lord, we thank you for Steve. We thank you for his time. We thank you for his friendship. Um, Thank you for his brotherhood. We thank you, Lord, for um, how you've built him and trained him and used him and will continue to do so. Thank you for protecting his life. Mm -hmm. Lord, as he was deployed multiple times in very dangerous locations, and I thank you for the the training that he gives um, men and women, um, Lord, who are out on the front lines um, protecting lives. um, And we pray you use that craft, that gifting, that training, um, Lord, to continue that work. And also, Lord, in his station and and also in the military, um, would you use him as a light? Your word says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your, your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And I pray, Father, he would just be a, a lightly um, uh, built light, Lord, that's shining around to those who would come and see and, and see the work of Jesus in him and in his family. Bless his marriage to Joelle. We're so thankful for her and yeah. her um, just contributions at Sandals, but also this campus. Um, we pray a blessing upon their boys, and I just pray, Father, that you just flourish them as a family, and that this would be one of the uh, most prosperous seasons of their life in in their marriage, in family, um, relationally, in ministry, um, and even emotionally. And so we rejoice in advance of that work. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I think I had, there was a moment where I saw a little bit of your eyes glaze over. There was, huh? It's new me. Yeah, oh, dude. Like, oh I saw we it, got, dude. This was like earlier in the conversation. We got a and I was like, mm, yeah, we got uh, Steve right where we Steve want him right, right now. In a soft spot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. We love you, bro. Thanks for having me. Love you. Man.